Okay, now we're going to extend this magnetic field from a single loop to number of windings of a finite solenoid, which is drawn here. So we have to redefine the current, which was I in this case. So we're going to replace that I by the winding density times the current times a distance, which is for an infinitesimal element dz. So we can use this formula, but now we have to integrate over the z coordinate. So we write this formula here. So b is a function of z. Of course, it's only in the z direction. Is equal to mu naught. Uh, this comes from the replacement of the current, the winding density times the current over 2, and then we integrate alpha squared over alpha squared plus z squared times 3 over 2, and then integrate over z. Since the integration over z is a little bit difficult, of course we can look it up from uh, z1 to z2. So for example, we integrate over the whole solenoid, we define the coordinates z1 and z2. You can solve this integral and uh, do the integration. However, we can also use a separate coordinate. We define the angle theta. So the angle theta, that is of course alpha over z. Alpha over z is equal to the tangent of theta, and that we write as sine theta over cosine of theta. That means that z is equal to the cosine of theta divided by sine of theta times alpha. So we can derive dz from this. dz is equal to alpha. And now of course we have to do integration for the differentiation by parts. And that is uh, the derivative of the cosine is the sine divided by the sine that gives minus 1, um, and then we have the cosine theta uh, divided by the derivative of 1 over x, so it's minus uh, cosine theta divided by sine theta squared, and then we have to the, the take the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine, multiply that, this becomes the square here, times the theta. Okay. And of course, if we fill in here sine squared over sine squared, then we have the same denominator, and we can reduce this term to minus alpha over sine squared, because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 uh, times the theta. We have um, z here in terms of theta, but uh, in fact what we see here in the B field is that we have a comp component of alpha squared divided by r to the third. So if we rewrite this, we can also rewrite that in mu zero, 
over 2 times i and alpha over r and this to the third. So we have 1 times alpha in the uh, denominator. So we have to put it here. So this is equivalent. And now alpha over r to the third is alpha over r is the sine of theta and that's to the third. So now we can put this and this expression in the integral and we end up with mu naught n i over 2. Uh, take one of alphas here, then this becomes sine to the third of theta across the integral. Then we take this part, and that's alpha over sine squared d theta and meet a minus sign from this one. So what do we end up? This alpha goes to that alpha sine squared to this. So we can do the integral and of course that's from z1 to z2 and we take corresponding angles theta 1 to theta 2 and if we do the integration of say the sine is minus the cosine so we have mu naught n i divided by 2 times cosine theta 2 minus cosine theta 1. Now let's check whether this result is correct for an infinitely long solenoid. So what do we have to do? For the z coordinate we have to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. For the theta coordinate we have to integrate and we have to be careful because what's the relation between theta and z? So z is infinity and that corresponds to a cosine being 1 and the sine being 0. That gives positive infinity. So when this is 1, this is for theta is 0. So we have to integrate to 0. And where do we come from? From minus infinity. Then the cosine is minus 1. And that means that that's for theta is pi. So we have to integrate from pi to infinity. Then we have the correspondence between the z and the theta coordinate. So z goes from minus infinity to infinity and then theta goes from pi to minus to zero. Okay, if we fill this in, in this formula, we have uh, from pi to zero, that means that uh, theta two is zero, so the cosine is one, and minus the cosine of theta one, that's minus one, so this gives two. So this will give b z is equal to mu naught n times i, and of course divided by two times two, that falls out. So the result, 
of an infinitely long solenoid is given by this formula.